Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 20th of June, 2011. 53 years ago this day, Kurt Older died. He was a German-born chemist who won the Nobel Prize, but his link to astronomy is that he has a crater named after him on the moon. Unfortunately for Kurt, it's on the back side of the moon, so he never got to see his own crater, or even know it was there. The sun has been very quiet while I've been away, and that has continued since I got back. In the last 24 hours we've had just two sea flares. One, interestingly, was a very impulsive event, and the other one was a much slower, longer event. Apparently the second one came from region 1234, going over the west limb. I've been unable to locate where the first one came from. There are only three numbered regions on the sun at the moment. The large region, 1236 in the northern hemisphere, it doesn't seem to have been changing very much recently. As I mentioned, 1234 is going over the west limb and will be lost today. Region 1238 seems to be losing its spots, and so will probably be gone by tomorrow. But I noticed three potentially new regions forming. One to the north and east of region 1236, and one trailing region 1236 in the northeast hemisphere, and one trailing 1238 in the southeast hemisphere. We'll have to keep an eye on these in the next couple of days to see whether they develop into anything significant. You can see the development of these three regions in the white light and magnetic movies. While they're all quite small, their growth seems to be relatively rapid and the magnetic field strength seems to be quite high. So this is a promising sign for the future. In the equivalent movies from the AIA instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory, we can see what's been going on in the transition region, Corona. In the transition region there are several eruptions, and especially concentrate on the one toward the end of the movie in the northeast hemisphere. In the Corona movie the most interesting things are the spectacular loop structures associated with the region 1234. The SOHO coronagraph data show two eruptions one off the east limb of the Sun, and one just at the very end of the movie in the northeast quadrant, probably associated with that filament eruption that we saw in the northeast hemisphere at the end of the transition region movie. The ACE data shows that we are in a relatively low speed solar wind stream at the moment, with a fairly modest speed and temperature but relatively high density. Meanwhile, the interplanetary magnetic field is highly variable. The auroral zone seems relatively quiet, and the KP index is only varying between 2 and 3, so we should not expect any spectacular aurora in the near future. So in summary then, the sunspot number is 47, the X-ray background is at B2 level, the radio sun is at 99 solar flux units, the solar wind speed is at about 390 kilometers per second with a density of about 4.5 protons per cubic centimeter and the KP index is rated at quiet. My forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares are possible. There's a remote chance of an M flare, but X flares are very unlikely. I think with these new regions the sunspot number should go higher. CMEs will remain very likely, but there's a low chance of a geomagnetic storm. In the longer term, there are no new big regions due back for about four or five days, so things will remain relatively quiet unless there are new regions emerge or the existing regions start to grow very rapidly. For more details about what's going on in the sun, you may want to check out some of the links I have posted in the description box below. And if you want to see earlier editions of the sun today, go to my channel. This interesting background picture is called a solargram. You can make one of these yourself with a beer can and some photographic paper and a lot of patience. It just illustrates the track of the sun across the sky over a one year period. Go to spaceweather.com for more details about how this is done. Sometimes it's fun to go back and see what the sun was like when it had the same face towards us that it does now. To go back one rotation, go to my video on the 24th of May. And to go back two rotations, go back to the video on the 27th of April. The links are in the description box below. Today's featured global warming video is the question, is Mercury warming up? 
This was part of the lecture I gave back in Portsmouth last Friday, uh, and which I will be making into a video. And I understand that the Hampshire Astronomical Group recorded the lecture and may be putting it up on its website, so keep an eye out for that. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now. Thank you.